Hello and welcome to this Pygame tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a game state manager for your Pygame game. Now right off the bat, what is a game state manager? Game state manager is basically uh, what manages the states inside of your game. Uh, for example, when you load up a game, usually you aren't just thrown into the game itself. You have a start screen or some menus or some cutscenes in the beginning before you get to the actual game itself. And the game state manager is what manages um, which uh, state you are currently in. So it's actually really simple to implement in Pygame. Um, I do ha recommend having some uh, prerequisites before this uh, tutorial. A couple of them are uh, basic knowledge of Python, uh, basic knowledge of Pygame, and some basic, basic knowledge of object-oriented programming, but the more the better. Uh, I, I'm going to be trying to explain uh, object-oriented programming concepts in this, but I can't cover every single thing about object-oriented programming inside of the length this video. So with that being said, let's get started. So you want to go ahead and open a file here. I have mine called main.py and I'm going to import pygame and I'm going to import system. And then I'm just going to create a class for my game here. You don't have to create a class for your game, but I do um, like doing it. I think it makes it a little organized. So I'm going to do class game and then create a function. Uh, this is basically this function uh, underscore underscore knit underscore underscore is called whenever you create an object of this class, which I will get into in a bit. So basically, whenever this class is um, used, this this is the first thing that happens. So we need to send itself because all functions inside of classes need to be sent self. And that's all we need for now. So now let's go ahead and initialize pygame pygame.init and then create the, uh, the screen that we're actually going to be using. So self.screen equals pygame.display.setMode. By the way, all variables, um, uh, all uh, variables that are going to be used um, in other uh, functions should be initialized in the init function and have self dot before the variable name. Um, it's an important thing about object oriented programming if you didn't know. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and create some global variables here. We're going to create a screen width and a screen height and set them equal to 1280 and 720. Then I'm going to create an FPS equals 60. I made these in all caps because all caps is a convention that basically means don't change these ever. Um, they're constants. There's no way to actually create a constant to my knowledge in Pygame. Um, but yeah, just use all caps and uh, other programmers should know that, hey, you don't touch this. So now we're going to create a clock variable self.clock equals pygame.time.clock. And that's all we need for uh, creating our um, our initial uh, game here. Now we need to create the game loop itself. So for that, we're going to create another function. I'm going to call it run. And then in here, I'm just going to create my um, while loop here, while true. And we need an exit condition for this. So for event in pygame.event.get, if event.type equals pygame.quit. And then we're just going to do pygame.quit and then system.exit. This just ensures that we are actually quitting. And then inside of the uh, while loop below the exit condition, we are going to update the display. So pygame.display.update. And then self.clock.tick at the FPS. This just makes sure that we are running at the FPS that we want to be running at. And so now um, for this, since I put it inside of a class, nothing will actually happen when I run it because this class is not being used at all. So we have to create an object of this class to use it. So we're going to do if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals um, in quotes underscore underscore main underscore underscore um, game equals game game dot run. Basically what this is saying is if you are actually running this file from inside the file, like you're actually on this file, you're not importing it, then you create an object of the class, which is calling this init function here. Um, or init method, my bad. Um, and then it's doing all this, and then it's doing the uh, run method here and running everything inside of here. So um, that's all it's doing. And this run method is the while loop. So if you notice that if we start this up, we have our nice uh, window here and we can close it and that's it. So let's go ahead and get into the actual meat of the um, video here and talk about the game states themselves. So for this, I'm going to create um, the states first and then I'm gonna create the game state manager because without the game states, there's no point in having a game state manager. So for this, I'm gonna create classes for each of them. Um, I'm going to go uh, above this um, 
create this I'm um, actually running the loop and I'm going to go below the game here and I'm going to do class level for our level um, our level state and then I'm going to create the init method send it self and I'm going to set it a display and I'm going to set it the game state manager and then I'm just going to do assign variables to those values so self display goes to say self dot game state manager equals game state manager, and then I'm going to create a run method here. So um, all you do is uh, create a method with run set itself, and for now I'm just going to do I'm just going to fill the screen with blue. So that way that we know if we are running the level, it is the screen is blue. So now all we need to do is just create a start screen. Um, for that I'm just going to do the exact same thing going to make sure I rename it to start and then assign this value to red. So now we have two classes level and start, but we are not currently accessing them. So if we run this, nothing happens. Um, so let's go ahead and add these to our game. So for that, I'm going to go inside of the init method of the game, go below creating all of the screen and the clock and stuff. And I'm going to do um, self dot level. But actually, before I do that, I do have to actually create the game state manager. So I'm going to create an empty class right now. I'm just going to call it uh, class game state manager and then def uh, create the init method here, send itself and pass it for now, just so I can get this up and running because these receive a game state manager. So in order to create them, I do have to send them that. Um, so now I'm going to do self dot start equals start and send it the screen and send it the game state manager. So let's go ahead and create our game state manager above it. Game state manager. And then equals game state manager. And this receives no, no arguments, so we don't need to do anything there. And then we send this to game state manager. Um, and then let's go ahead and do the exact same thing for the level. Make sure you rename it to something else. And then make sure you are using the level class here. Um, and they both take the same arguments, so that's the same there. All right, so now that we have this, um, we still don't see anything because we're not doing anything with these classes. So let's go ahead and find a way to run these dynamically. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use this game state manager here. And all we need to do is add one argument to this. We are going to add the argument um, current state inside of our init. So this basically means that when we create this object of this class, this uh, um, needs to receive a current state in order to work. So we are going to do self dot current state equals current state. Um, and now we have a current state, but cool. How, what do we do with this? Um, well, there are two main methods that we need to add here. And these are the only methods that you really need um, to make an effective game state manager. You need a get and a set method. And all these do is they get the current state and they set the current state. So we're going to do def um, get state and return the self.current state, and then we need a set state. Give it self and then return, or not not return actually, we need to self.current state, and then we need to set this equal to, and then we need an argument for this, we're going to add state. And this is basically saying that when we set the state, we are setting it to whatever value we send it, and then um, that's setting this variable current state to that new state. And this is it. This is our entire game state manager. This, what, what is this? Like, um, this is seven lines of code. That's all we need. And it's extremely, extremely powerful. So now what we're going to do is we need to first send it an initial state. And I'm going to use a string here. And I'm going to call it start. Now this actually means nothing right now. This, this string, um, Python has no idea what to do with this. So we need to go ahead and give it some functionality. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a dictionary. So I'm going to go below these um, objects of uh, objects here, and I'm going to create a dictionary of states. So self.states equals, and then a dictionary with curly brackets. And I'm going to call start here, colon, and then self.start. And then comma for a new key value pair, level and colon self.level. And so now basically what we are going to do with this dictionary is we are going to take this and we're going to use the game state manager to get the current state of the game um, via these keys here. And then we are going to 
um, check inside of the state wh wh what value this key holds, in this case, self.start, and then we're going to run that. So the way we're going to do that is very simple. We're just going to go down here, and it's only one line of code. We do self.states, and then in the brackets here, to send it our key value that we're looking for, we're going to do self.gamestateManager.getState, and then outside of the brackets here, we're going to do dot run. This is saying that inside of the states dictionary, um, look for the key that is returned by this get state method here, and then run it. And an important, important note about this is uh, make sure that all of your states have this method that you call here. Um, it doesn't have to be a run method, it can be anything, but make sure that it, they all have it because if you switch to one that doesn't, it's going to completely break. So that's very, very important. And so now, if we run this, boom, we have red here. And if you'll notice that red means start. Since we created, we made our current state start, it ran red. But let's change this to level. Boom, we got blue. So as you can see, um, it's working perfectly fine. But of course, you can't change the text here every time you want to change states. You want to be able to do it um, dynamically outside of coding. So one way, we can, one way we can do that is uh, through inputs. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do um, go inside of this uh, if event for loop here, and I'm going to do if, if event.type equals pi game dot key down. This means that if any key is pressed, do whatever's in here. So we don't care what key, just for this example, I'm going to do self.gamestateManager.setState, and I'm going to do it to level. All right, and now we can go ahead and click this. We press space, and it switches over to level. Um, so there you go. I mean, it's very, very simple. You can, of course, add any condition you want to allow this to happen. And what you actually, um, what, what's really, really powerful about this is that we actually sent the game state manager uh, to all of our levels or all of our states here. So what's really cool is you don't have to change it inside of the actual game loop. What's really cool about this is you can change it inside of any of these states here. So inside of our run method in our level class here, um, or inside of our start class here, I'm going to check for input. Um, and so I'm going to do uh, keys equals pygame.key.get get pressed. And then I'm going to do if keys at um, pi dot, uh, let's say k underscore e, or pygame.k underscore e. And then let's figure out a spell. And then basically, if we do this, we just do self.gamestateManager.set state, and we'll set it to level. And there you go, um, E, and it switches over. But let's say we want to switch back. I mean, how would you do that? Well, since we can access it in both of these, why don't we just copy this code, put it in our level run method here, and switch this over to start. And basically run this, we press E, and it flips over. Very, very simple. Let's go ahead and um, get into some of the logistics behind this. So one uh, key takeaway from this is that the run method inside of these um, inside of these states, they are only called if they are the current game state. So if the game state is start, only this one is, is actually running. This one is not doing anything. Um, and vice versa. So um, if you run something, these are not loops that are looping every time the, the game loop is happening. They are only being run um, in the game loop whenever the game state manager is set to them. So that means that things will not be running in the background while you're on a different state. If you want that to happen, you're going to have to do some extra little finicking to get that to work. Um, but for now, we're just doing a basic, basic tutorial on game states. So I hope this was sufficient. Um, if you, you know, of course you can wildly, wildly expand this. I actually have an example of me using this game state in a game, um, very, very, uh, simple game, but it shows, you know, the power of this game state. We have just a, uh, a start menu, uh, state here, go ahead and start it. We have a splash screen before the game, and then we have the actual game itself here. And 
you know, stuff like that. We have a pause menu here. You can resume. You can also just press escape again to get out of it. And then we have a finish line here. And then that's it. I mean, and this is all achieved by a very simple game state. This is my entire game state for um, for this game here. And you can see that it's almost exactly the same. I only have one extra functionality added to it. Um, and I actually don't even use it in this game. So there you go. I mean, the, the, the possibilities are basically endless with this uh, setup here. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you have any recommendations or any suggestions on what I should be covering next, let me know. Um, if you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. If you hated the video, make sure to comment down below. Let me know how much you hated it. Thank you very much. Have a good day. See ya.